transverse isotropic uh, materials. And here uh, we have five parameters, basically the C11 and C12, C13, and C33 and C44. One, two, three, four, five. And only use five elastic constant, and we can fully describe the stress strain relations. And um, the the uh, explanation is of why uh, these only have five here. Basically, the concept is this. Uh, in, for example, for this case, in our demonstrations, uh, x1, x2, x3, in our x1, Okay, in this designation, we, we say that this material is isotropic at the different level of the x1, x2 plane. And then uh, if we would pick the different level, then that, that isotropy, uh, isotropy will be different. So that means if we move the level up in the x3 direction, basically that kind of the isotropic information is different. Okay, so that we call it transverse. Transverse, that means the, the material remains uh, as an isotropic only in x1, 2 direction, but once you transverse, transverse in x3 direction, then that things change. Okay. Um, so that is the contents here. And when we derive the format like this one I have used is this. Uh, basically, for material to be isotropic, that means uh, when we apply the rotation in the x1, x2 plane, and in that case, uh, we rotate any angles. So that means if we rotate about x3 direction by theta, and that is the, uh, notated by x1, x2, x3 for transformations, then we have applied this, uh, that is called sine theta. And sine theta, zero, minus sine theta, and cosine theta, zero, 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 one, okay. I have applied such a transformation matrix, and then, then in the remaining process, I claim for any number of the theta, the material properties must be the same, doesn't matter how, regarding the change of the theta. So stick with this requirement, then the remaining process, in, as shown in the handout is this, we knock out all the um, elastic constant that associate with the theta those constants must be zero. And that is the, this is a single sentence of the summaries for the two page of the, uh, two page of the calculations in the handouts I give to you today, okay? So stick with that one, and that won't take too much time, uh, maybe 30 minutes. Most of time it is spent in writing, okay? But the concept is very easy, and you can refer to the handouts there, okay? So keep this in mind, um, of course, right now the calculation is important, but sometimes once you know the procedures, then uh, your learning focus should be on the uh, outcomes, the form here, okay? So keep this in mind, then um, I can proceed to calculate, uh, to determine this, this. So here for, I'm going to um, make a contractions. I'm going to, to get some information uh, from these tables to see the uh, isotropy. So for this table, we in corresponding, we know the xy plane, the x1, x2 plane are isotropic. So this is the plane information that I'm going to extract to see the stress-strain relation. Okay, for component of the stress and strain in X2 plane, let me highlight here. These components and this component. Okay, so basically we do a little bit of uh, the abstractions from the result here. So corresponding to this one, then you can see the relation is tau 1, 1, tau 2, 2, and tau 1, 2. Okay, just for including this one, so basically that is the C11, C12. And 
and then um, Is it a zero zero and then C one one minus C one two here? Okay, so for this case, basically here you can see in the X one X two plane the material properties or book slow relation basically struck by this. Then we can see how many numbers here uh, in the independent elastic constant C11 and C12, only two. Okay, so that is the first, our first taste. Uh, we've been doing this book slow uh, stress strain relationship for a couple of weeks. Eventually, we reach the very common uh, material properties, isotropic material properties. And for this example, I, I only demonstrate is in two plane, X1, X2 plane only. But here, that is it comes to the very good, uh, important conclusion is this. For isotropic materials, we only need two uh, independent uh, elastic constants. So here, we have only two. And compared to transversely, this is five. Okay. So that is a very quick conclusion. We can uh, extend it from our study here. So this one is only based upon all our observations for isotropic and here for isotropic uh, two-dimensional um, uh, conditions too, okay? And usually this one is named as the plane stress conditions and um, but later I will give you a precise definition for plane stress, plane strain. So that is the, for this case. And then uh, another uh, discussion I want to make is this. So based upon this, I think it will be more useful to come up with the using our engineering notation, which means Young's modulus, uh, Poisson ratio, and rigidity modulus. So in terms of the uh, engineering definitions, and let me put into you here. So here is the x, y, z plane, and then uh, the isotropic, 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 in x, y plane. Okay. And then transversely, And in particular, the first one is isotropic in the XY plane. Okay, and the same, I, right now I changed the symbol from X1, X2, X3 to XYZ. And then uh, we, I want to utilize the, um, use what we call the engineering uh, notations to describe And here, the way we can try is this. Um, again, I'm going to keep swapping these, uh, either stress related to strength or strength related to stress. I'm going to keep swapping, but here, 
I'm using a string, okay? So x y z and gamma x y and gamma x z and gamma y z. Stress how x, how y, how z, and ah, sorry, sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, and how x y, how x z, how y z. For isotropic materials, I simply use E, and E is the um, corresponding is this one. Okay, uh, sorry, the inverse of this one. Uh, for this one, again, that is E, and this one is minus E, and using Poisson ratio. Let me follow with my lecture notes. I want to. I don't want to kind of mess up here. Okay. So EP uh, is simply a notation for uh, the describing the Young's modulus in the as a Charlie X Y plane. Okay. And so this is EP, and this is EZ, and this is EZ minus UP. This is symmetric. And this is 0, 3 by 3. 0, 3 by 3. And this one simply is uh, G, X, Y, and 0, 0, and G, P, and 0, and G, P. Okay, so this is symmetric. So here we can count how many parameters and EP. And EZ, and that's a two uh, Young's moduli. And Poisson ratio, we have two and YX. Okay. And then here we have the G, XY, and GP. Oops, these are six parameters. But here I told you that should be, have, that should be five. Mistake, probably no. Um, in isotropic uh, materials, basically here, uh, for isotropic material related is this. The P is, uh, denoting is the properties in the XY plane. And if you remember for isotropic material, we have the relation between Young's modulus and uh, rigidity modulus and uh, so out of GP equal to E divided by two one plus Poisson ratio make here. Okay, so keep this in mind. Then basically one relation with six uh, with six parameter basically equivalent is we only need five here. So, um, so that is the more kind of practical engineering engineering format for describing the things here. 
And uh, if you are uh, your final project, I think it's time for everyone to start with your final project. If you are uh, some of you doing kind of transversely as a topic, then uh, I think this information will help you to visualize the individual subsections about which property you've been working on. Okay, I think that is right. Okay, so that will be a good roadmap for you. Okay, so that is a section for this. Okay, Max will take a break. Okay.